hi i'm back with another video i'm really sorry about the situation my hair face just wasn't playing ball today sorry about that <laughs> this is how i look <laughs> i have two sons uh seb who has just turned two and dexter who is my eldest he is three and a half um and dexter was diagnosed with autism spectrum condition at three years old uh, like when he just turned three autism affects children in all different ways no two presentations are the same. For Dexter we don't have at this point huge sensory difficulties but we do have a very 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 significant speech and communication delay to the point where at this moment in time Dexter is effectively non-verbal. Dexter is showing some signs that maybe verbal communication is the way he's heading however autism is very unpredictable nothing is a given I can't say for sure that my son will be a verbal communicator. I'm going to talk a little bit about how we communicate with him and some of the progress we, we are seeing. What I wanted to do in this video was show you some videos and some footage of what that looks like in real life. I guess in a way I want to provide some reassurance that although we don't have speech at present, we do have communication. And it is important to remember that you can have communication without speech. In the same way you can have speech and no communication. Speech is not the be all and end all. I used to look at children who were still non-verbal at three and think, okay, non-verbal, this is a very severe presentation of autism, hopefully that's not the road we're going down. Um, I want to say that speech is just one part of an overall developmental picture of Dexter, and he actually has a very spiky profile. Dexter's receptive language, which is his ability to understand what you are saying and follow instructions, things like that, far, far surpasses his capability to express himself, his thoughts and his needs. And I think this is true of a lot of children on the spectrum. They can understand far more than they can express. Just because Dexter doesn't have speech doesn't mean to say that all areas of his development are so significantly affected. What does Thomas do? <gasps> Where is Peppa Pig? Yeah. Where's your ears? Now, as I go through and show you these videos and talk a bit about how we communicate with our son, I want you to bear in mind that this is a child who at 18 months old had, I think, no communication whatsoever. Maybe he could lead, lead by hand sometimes. He didn't communicate through gestures. He didn't attempt any words. His eye contact was very, very limited. He didn't respond to what we were saying 99.9% .9 of the time. Dexter. Dexter, what's this? Dexter, what's this? Oh my goodness. Hi, Dexter. What's this? Dexter, what's this? I remember at one point when he was, oh, he must have been about 14 months old. Um, I got up with him in the morning and we uh, tried playing games, you know, gave him breakfast, all those sorts of things. And I remember just breaking down in floods of tears because it took him three hours to even acknowledge that I was there. So it's nice to look back at three and even though we don't have speech yet, um, it's nice to see the strides that he's made. Wherever your child is now and however severely affected you think they are, um, it's no prediction of where they're going to be in the future. Dexter's speech therapists follow a program called the Hannon More Than Words program. And the really great thing about it is it is intended as a program that you work with with your child at home. You can actually buy the book online, I think mean, it's quite expensive, but you can buy the book online. And what it does is it divides children into four different stages of communication, starting with children who are on the own agenda stage and going right through to the partner stage. Whatever stage your child is at, there are tips on how you can increase interaction, on how you can improve communication skills, and these can be very, very simple things. I found it helpful. The speech therapist lent it to me. I read it from cover to cover. So the first thing Dexter learnt was leading by hand, and this was the first way in which he communicated with us. The problem with this method is it involves a hell of a lot of interpretation. My son could lead me somewhere, and I don't necessarily know exactly what it is he wants me to do but it is a great first step. We then moved on to trying to get him to do some basic signs. 
So there are many different sign languages? Is that what you call them? <laughs> we used Makaton just because that's what uh, his nursery staff were trained in and that's what the speech therapist taught us how to use. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't know a lot at Makaton. I, I should learn some more. But first of all, very, very simply, we taught him the sign for more. I had to place his hand in the position I wanted it to be in to make the sign. Uh, and he would learn far better because I could do it in front of him all day long. Back then, he will mimic now, but back then I could do this sign in front of him all day long and he would just wouldn't get it. It did take a long time before he would then sign independently. And even now, with all methods of communication, Dexter still is very prompt dependent. He tell me. Mwah. You want this more? <gasps> he is starting to communicate independently that is progress he is still very prompt dependent and that's what we are working on so once Dexter had mastered more uh, we then moved on to other simple signs finished um, what else do we did teach him please um, and thank you but then were advised by the speech therapist uh, to stick to things that are more simple like yes and no rather than manners, things that are a bit more abstract. Obviously there's eat, um, sing, we did book, that's it, good signing. Like, you want me to read that? Book. Thomas, he's the cheeky one. Thomas and his, and his friends good signing once he got to grips with the whole signing thing he would make up his own signs so we would do actions for songs like wheels on the bus and he would then apply that to different situations so if he saw a bus when we were out and about and he wanted to go up to it he would say bus or if he wanted us to sing wheels on the bus he would gesture bus <laughs> These are signs that he developed and some speech therapists will tell you you need to stick to the actual sign you were taught and others say just go with the child as long as it's consistent. I'm not a speech therapist, I can't give advice, I, I can only tell you how we communicate with our son. He learned a lot of signs through songs because Dexter is very very motivated by music, he has always loved music. To little Thomas James jumping on the bed, Douglas fell off and bumped his Head. Ow. Ow! Mummy called. Oh, actually, Baby Seb called the doctor. Baby Seb called the doctor. And the doctor said, No more Thomas trains jumping on the bed. One common bun in a baker's shop. Wound up fat with sugar on the top. Along came Dexter with a penny one day. Bought a current bun and took it away. What does Mummy do, say? Quack. 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 Can you blow me a kiss? Oh, thank you. We then moved on to gesturing. So I managed hand over hand to teach him pointing. Pointing to things was not something that came naturally to him. I had to teach him that if he pointed to something, he would get it. Eventually that clicked. Which one do you want? Which one do you want? Point, point, point. That one. Show me, show me. Nutella. You've seen the Nutella. So that left. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, N nine. Where's the zebra? Yeah, good pointing. The zebra is there. Where's five? <gasps> good boy, Dexter. Where's daddy? There he is. There he is, isn't he? After we taught pointing, we moved on to yes and no. So yes and no. 
I remember moving his head to teach him what a nod was, to teach him that a nod meant yes. The great thing is once he got that, I was able to ask him questions for the first time and get an answer from him. Huge, huge breakthrough. Dexter, do you want a Jaffa cake? Yes, yes. good boy. Do you want juice? <sighs> yeah. Should we go in the bath? Hey. No. No. Do you want to watch mommy's phone? <laughs> Dexter, do you want to go in? Do you want to go in? In there? No. Lots and lots of children with autism are very visually led, my son included. His visual skills have always been amazing. He it loves pictures with lots of little detail, all of his stims are visual stims. So it was a natural next step to move on to pictures. What we do with Dexter is we use choice boards. We did start some picture exchange, but the speech therapist told us that because Dexter can point to indicate what he wanted, um, Peck's picture exchange is not necessarily the best fit for him. I don't know. What do you want? <sighs> You want to jump top? Yes! Okay then. Also, I know I've touched on this a little bit before, but Dexter is hyperlexic, which means that he can read. He, when I say read, he can recognise words that he is familiar with, uh, and he memorises those words very, very quickly. So we were able to programme an app that just had words on. By the way, we did not realise at all that he possessed this skill until he was around about two and a half. That's been a really powerful tool for us, uh, but something I need to work with a speech therapist to develop further. The Great Race. The Great Race. The Great Race. You want to watch The Great Race? Uh, it is difficult because sometimes I, I, I can't figure out what it is he wants, and I give him his app and ask him, but the problem is he then sees things and he, he thinks, oh yeah, I really, really want this, whereas he might not have been thinking it anyway. Like, imagine you go to a restaurant and there's like really nice food on this <laughs> menu, but half of it's not available. I don't know how best to manage that. Like I say, we have the speech therapist come in next week. We'll see what she suggests. I want to eat Oreo. You want to eat an Oreo? It's six in the morning. Could you maybe have some fruit toast? Fruit toast? No. And finally, we are starting to get some word approximations. These are hugely prompt dependent at the moment. By the way, a word approximation is something that doesn't quite sound like a clear word, but is a sound that is used to mean that word every time. For the most part, his word approximations are not functional. They don't provide a functional way for him to communicate at the moment. Ready, steady. Go, 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 Open. Do you need help? Help. There you go. Can you say bye bye? Bye bye. Bye bye bye. Wave. Mum, mum, mum. Wave bye bye. Good boy. What did he do? He went. Crash. Crash. Get that dummy out. What, do you want me to sing it again? Yeah, take dummy out then. Accidents happen? Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed watching the footage. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. It doesn't feel like you're making too much progress at the time, but then when you look back, you see, oh, actually, yeah, it was, it was a lot of progress. You can only compare your child's progress to how they were 
X amount of months or years ago. You can't compare them to typically developing peers. I am going to be doing these updates every few months or when we get a big communication breakthrough. So if you do want to follow us, please subscribe to our channel. And as always, thank you for watching.